This is video podcast six from learningradiology.com. The Salter Harris Classification of Epiphyseal Fractures in Children. I'm William Herring from Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia for Learning Radiology. Epiphyseal plate fractures are relatively common fractures in children. They occur through the weakest part of the growing bone, the epiphyseal plate. Most heal without any problems, complications are rare, and conventional radiography is the study of choice. The Salter-Harris classification divides these fractures into five different categories. There have been other categories added subsequently, but they are of less common fractures. And the classification provides prognostic clues. As we'll see, the higher the number of the classification, the worse the prognosis, and the greater the chance of complication. The bone is divided into the diaphysis, the metaphysis, the epiphysis, and between the metaphysis and the epiphysis lies the epiphyseal plate, also known as the physis or the growth plate. All of the Salter-Harris fractures are going to involve the open epiphyseal plate. A Salter-Harris 1 fracture involves only the epiphyseal plate. Unless there is some displacement of the epiphysis on the metaphysis or widening of the epiphyseal plate, these can be impossible to diagnose. They tend to heal quickly in a matter of just a few weeks, and complications are rare. Salter-Harris 1 fractures are the result usually of shearing forces. And, as I said, unless there is displacement of the metaphysis on the epiphysis. They can be very difficult to diagnose. Sometimes obtaining the opposite side for comparison can be helpful in demonstrating widening of the epiphyseal plate. Sometimes after a matter of several days of immobilization, periosteal new bone formation can present itself and indicate the presence of a fracture. This is an example of a Salter 1 fracture. This is the proximal humerus. And I think you could see that there is displacement of the epiphysis on the metaphysis. And there is also widening of the epiphyseal plate. Salter Harris 2 fractures are the most common type of epiphyseal plate fractures. They involve both the epiphyseal plate and the metaphysis. Frequently a corner of the metaphysis separates from the remainder of the metaphysis and these rarely produce complications on healing. So a Salter-Harris II fracture, as the black line shows, involves usually a corner of the metaphysis. Very frequently that corner remains with the epiphysis while the remainder of the metaphysis is displaced. The corner is sometimes called the corner sign. It is also called the Thurston Holland sign. And here's an example of a Salter Harris II fracture of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. And I think that you can see that right here, there is a fracture line that separates this tiny fragment from the remainder of the metaphysis. This is the epiphysis. No, we can't see the fracture through the growth plate itself, but this is a Salter-Harris II fracture. There is a fracture through the epiphyseal plate. Salter-Harris III fractures are fractures through the epiphyseal plate and the epiphysis itself. Because they involve the epiphysis, they extend to the joint surface, and because they extend to the joint surface, they can involve the articular cartilage and result in damage to the articular cartilage. They require early reduction. So a Salter-Harris III fracture is a fracture that extends through the epiphyseal plate and then also through the epiphysis itself. This is an example of a Salter-Harris III fracture of the distal tibia. You can see that there is a linear radiolucency that extends through the epiphysis to the articular surface that's going to result in damage to 
the articular cartilage. Salter Harris four fractures involve the epiphyseal plate, the epiphysis, and the metaphysis. Because they involve the epiphysis, they do extend to the joint surface, and Salter Harris four fractures will oftentimes result in growth disturbances or angular deformities. A Salter Harris four fracture is a fracture through the metaphysis, through the epiphysis, and to the articular cartilage. Because the fracture extends through the growing cartilage, it frequently results in angular deformities or growth disturbances. Here is an example of a Salter IV fracture. This is the distal tibia, and you can see a linear radiolucency through the metaphysis and a linear radiolucency through the epiphysis. So this fracture extends through the metaphysis, through the epiphyseal plate, and down through the epiphysis to the articular cartilage. Salter Harris five fractures are rare. They are crush or compression injuries secondary to axial loading rather than shear injuries to the epiphyseal plate. The initial diagnosis of these may be impossible and they may only be visible after the complications ensue. Salter Harris five fractures have the highest incidence of angular deformities. They result in axial loading which crushes or compresses the epiphyseal plate. That may produce early fusion of the epiphyseal plate in one area and no fusion in another so that there is an angular deformity that develops in the bone involved. And here's an example of that in the distal radius. On the medial side, of the junction between the epiphysis and the metaphysis, there is fusion. On the lateral aspect of the epiphyseal plate, the plate remains open, and that has resulted in an angular deformity because growth stopped medially while it continued laterally. So to recap, Salter 1 fractures are fractures through the epiphyseal plate alone. Salter II fractures are fractures through the epiphyseal plate and the metaphysis. Salter III fractures are fractures through the epiphyseal plate and the epiphysis. Salter IV fractures are fractures through the epiphyseal plate, the metaphysis, and the epiphysis. And Salter V fractures are crush injuries to the epiphyseal plate that can re result in angular deformities. As we move from the Salter Harris I to the Salter Harris V fracture, the prognosis worsens. Here's a mini quiz for you. Take a look at this knee injury and decide which type of Salter Harris fracture it is. You can pause your MP3 player or computer. Well, if you said it was a Salter Harris 2, you were correct. This is one part of the metaphysis. This is the corner sign. Here's the remainder of the metaphysis that has been displaced laterally, and here is the epiphysis. The fracture extends along the epiphyseal plate and into the metaphysis. This is a Salter-Harris II fracture.